Thanks to great work in those semi-finals, they both got their ticket to Wembley. But what is going to happen? Who is going to walk away from the most lucrative match in domestic football? And who is going to find themselves in the Premier League next season? Hey guys, and welcome back to the Fans Perspective. And in today's video, I will be dissecting and predicting the Championship Playoff Final, as we are just days away from arguably the biggest joint underdog final we have seen in years. Almost everyone believed that either Sunderland or Borough would be lifting silverware in the playoffs this season but no they've been left by the wayside by two hard-working and pragmatic sides now around five years ago Luton and Coventry were battling it out in League Two and now they find themselves in the most lucrative match in domestic football in order to get to my conclusion on who I believe will win this championship playoff final firstly I'll be leaving my Coventry allegiances aside obviously giving a fair playing field to both but I'll be going through a variety of factors so obviously I'll be deep diving into both semi-finals and see which team was the most dominant and which team looks the most confident going into the game at Wembley. I'll also be looking at the history between the two sides and obviously the past two meetings from this season. Maybe if I can get any information from that. And then finally, who I believe is the star player to look out for for each side and who will make the difference and possibly win the championship playoff final for their team. If you do like this sort of content, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you know when the video goes live. We're getting so close to 4,000 subs. And just quickly before we do go into the video, here's a little fun fact that I found out. If you were to combine the two budgets that these clubs had at the start of the season, you wouldn't even be able to afford or equal the amount that Manchester United paid for Harry Maguire. This shows how much of an underdog both clubs are. Let's get into it. Starting off with Coventry, obviously the two semi-finals between Coventry and Borough were low scoring games but just like every single other there are clashes this season, the two sides obviously played each other four times this season including three times in a nine day period but especially in the two semi-finals they epitomised knockout football. Coventry were playing the defensive style of play, letting Middlesbrough play their own game, keep the majority of possession but Coventry were sitting deep, hitting them on the counter attack and on every single time they played apart from the very end of that second leg Coventry actually outshot their opponents despite having very little of the ball now this pragmatic approach is amazing in knockout football because they stuck to their guns they stuck to their strengths and they were able to actually get that deciding goal from Gustavo Hamer just like they did in the league game what a goal it was into the right hand corner but, you know, going into the final, this pragmatic approach might not be the best thing at all. Because, you know, a well common cliche in football is if you don't have the ball, you can't score goals. But on the complete other side of that coin, they've obviously got one of the best goalkeepers in the league. They've got the golden glove winner in Ben Wilson. He also scored a very important goal. It got their hopes on track for playoffs in the first place. So he's arguably one of the most informed keepers in world football this season. Coventry are not seeming to be losing games and not conceding goals, which you know, compared to Luton, where they've conceded quite a few in recent games, I guess they could have that confidence on their side. But yeah, I do think that the way they played against Middlesbrough, especially considering Borough were one of the favourites to actually lift the Championship playoff trophy, they've done really well to keep their attacking talents at bay because, come on, Borough had some of the best attacking talents in the league. Yes, Luton do too, and they've got a much better attacking and more uh, lethal aerial threat, which is a completely different ball game to deal with. But I do think that Coventry will be looking confident going into the game at Wembley. Just one final note on commentary. Something that I would like to say that in comparison to the other set of semi-finals, which I'll talk about in a minute, despite not really being able to take advantage of their home leg, obviously ending nil-nil, at every single point in that game, the players were willing to put everything on the line, their bodies on the line, especially in the dying embers of the second leg, when it was just so, so I think it was eight minutes, so it was too much time. This tension was building, stress was building, but they kept their heads cool, and that's a really good sign going into Wembley, because they didn't lose their heads, and they were willing to risk it all for the club. Something which, as we'll go on to shortly, for a certain period of the semi-finals for Luton, that wasn't the case. 
Moving swiftly on to Luton now, it'll be interesting to me to see who gets the fairer share of possession at Wembley, as similarly to Coventry, Luton actually allowed Sunderland, their opponents, the majority of possession over both semi-finals. Something that they didn't do is in both legs outshoot them, but something which I do find quite impressive is they did something that Coventry didn't do. On both occasions, they actually got a higher amount of XG compared to Sunderland. And right, you can talk about the second leg all day long. Obviously, it was a dominant performance from Luton. They played amazingly and they played to their strengths. They got the ball into their box. And yes, the first goal in the second leg was a very, very clumsy one. And it practically just rolled into the net. It was a goal line scramble. But they all count. They did exactly the same in the first leg. And in knockout football, any goal counts. It doesn't matter how beautiful it is. But in terms of beautiful goals... Obviously, Luton, they, they dominated the first half an hour of that first leg. But as soon as that moment of magic from Diallo went in, their heads turned. They were mentally, they switched off. And compared to Luton Town's standards throughout the season, it was an abysmal performance in that second half of the first leg of the Stadium of Light. And it was something that Coventry fans will be looking at very, very happily to see if they can do it to the Luton players at Wembley. Obviously, I'm not saying that this is something that will happen at the final because, you know, a loss of content concentration maybe something that affect you mentally in the game that doesn't happen every single time but I will say it's something to think about we then move on to the history between the two clubs I'm not going to go too far back because obviously you want to stick with the same squads you want to see how the players are going into this final obviously this season and where better to do that than the two times these clubs have faced this season obviously both times respectively they've ended in draws 1-1 and 2 all. the first time Tom Lockyer was the one that got the goods for Luton heading it in in the first minute and then they equalised Coventry with a penalty in 45 plus 1 Coventry did go down to 10 men late on but they they were able to secure the draw. In the game in September, however, it was a much more interesting game. A scramble early on, three goals in the first 15 minutes put Luton ahead 2-1, with a latish goal, a screamer from Gus Harmer getting the equaliser and levelling the scores. In both games, it's been split down the middle in terms of possession. Around 50-50 both games, obviously a little bit of leeway because you're not always going to be perfect. And in terms of shots, they've levelled the outage as well, especially in the one game I believe uh, they both got 11 shots and 4 shots on target which is quite interesting going into the final. Something which I will say though is that I think that Luton are a little bit more scrambly to get their goals whereas the goals for Coventry have been moments of magic so I think that could cause a little bit more confidence going in Luton's way because come on you're not always going to get moments of magic where or the way that Luton play you're always going to get the ball into the box and have the ball fumbling and making it difficult for your opponent. Before we do move on to the players to look out for and the key men in these games, one man which you're definitely sick and tired of hearing the name of, but an interesting man to look out for, is Pelle Roduk and Panzu. The man joined Luton when they were in the conference in 2013, and upon winning the conference, he's still at Luton, and all these years later, he is now one game away from the Premier League. So completing the infamous dream of every football fan of taking their club from rock bottom to the very top. For me, Coventry's key player to look out for and the man that will be the real difference maker for them is got to be the goalkeeper, Ben Wilson. He started the season second fiddle and after some, you got to say, good fortune and excellent form, the man has picked up the golden glove this season and he's even scored a goal. A crucial one, if that. I think his saves and just, I say prowess and actual style of play in the semi-finals, just keeping the cool head, making sure his defence felt safe and obviously they could take more risks. I think this will make a big difference in the final, especially with the way that Luton get the ball into the box. Now, from a Luton Town perspective, obviously the partnership of Morris and Adebayo will need looking after because we all know what they bring to the table. Their attacking ability, their aerial threat, and Jesus Christ, the pure finishing ability of the two of them. But the man that I'm actually going to be putting on the table is the man that I mentioned earlier. He scored the deciding goal in the playoff semi, and he's already scored against Coventry this season. It's Tom Lockyer. He's a great defender. He's got a cool head. He's an experienced head as well. And um, yeah, I think think he's gonna be a great player in this final I think he could be the difference maker if Luton do score I can see it coming through him obviously he always finds himself in the right areas 41 out of 41 starts and yeah I think if he plays well Luton will have a very good chance so there we have it guys we now move on to my final prediction in a season where both sides reasonably started quite poorly obviously Luton with a terrible home record to start the season and Coventry 
They didn't look like they had an owner. They didn't look like they had a stadium. They couldn't play on their home matches at the start of the season. And it really did portray on the pitch as well. For 16 game weeks, they are bang in the relegation zone. But, you know, thanks to some good January signings, teamwork, heart, determination, both sides found themselves in the semi-finals. And thanks to great work in those semi-finals, they both got their ticket to Wembley. But what is going to happen? Who is going to walk away from the most lucrative match in domestic football? And who is going to find themselves in the Premier League next season? Now, it's a difficult one to pick here. Obviously, both sides have their strengths. But I'm going to go for it. It's going to look bad with me wearing this shirt, but I'm going to go with a 2-1 commentary win in extra time. I do think that Gus Hamer is going to bag himself a goal and I think he's going to book himself a move in the summer. And, uh, you know, I think Luton will get their equaliser. I'm not sure. I can imagine a great ball into the box just like it did in the semi-finals. And then it'll just be, I'm not going to put a name on it, but I think someone will step up for commentary in extra time to put them back into the Premier League. What did you guys think? Drop a comment down below if you guys think I'm stupid. Who do you think? Do you think Luton's going to go up? Why do you think that? Please drop a comment and I'll try and answer every single one of them. Please smash the like button if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. And yeah, without further ado guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.